Hi, this video is on the normal curve and finding the area under a normal curve using Z values. Uh, the steps for using the TI Inspire calculator are over here on the left. Go to the menu button, five probability, five distribution, and then number two, normal CDF, and type in the lower and upper bounds. Okay, so we wanna find what percent of this curve is shaded. Do you see this whole thing is shaded except for this right here? So that you can see right now, that's uh, 90% or something it looks like. Um, by the way, half of it shaded would be 50%, right? 0 0.50, 50%. The other half is 50%. So to find out how much of this is shaded, you on our calculator, we're going to use Z values. Here's a Z value here, 2.09. Now on the far left, what Z value is over here? Well, the far left, that graph keeps on going to the left. If zero is in the middle, then to the left, we have negative numbers. So we can call this negative infinity. Away over here on the right, these are positive numbers. So over here, we call this positive infinity. Now, our calculator doesn't have an infinity symbol. So instead of infinity, because we're using Z values for negative infinity, I'm going to use negative 99. And for positive infinity, I'm going to use 99. These are 99 standard deviations away from zero, which is is the same thing as talking about infinity. So in this case, the lower boundary is always far left. So our far left boundary will be negative 99. Our far right boundary is 2.09. So we're using these two numbers, this number and this number to find the area between it on our calculator, we're gonna go to, first of all, you can go to your scratch pad by clicking on A, or you can go to new document number one, add a calculator. And this is the page I like to go to. Uh, so following the instructions, it says go to menu, number five, probability, then number five again, distribution, and then number two, normal CDF. And your, your center, your mean will always be zero standard deviations, that's the center, uh, and you're using one standard deviation. Uh, segments. So this is the, the zero and the one should always be in these two spots. So our lower boundary was negative infinity, negative 99. And by the way, the easiest negative button is right here, negative 99. And our upper boundary, by the way, the lower boundary is always the one on the left. The lower is always on the left. And the upper is always on the right. So our upper boundary is a positive 2.09. Positive 2.09. And now you leave the zero and the one there. If you hit OK, we have 98% of the graph shaded in. So the area that is shaded in is 0 0.9817 if I go four decimal places, which is about 98% of the graph shaded in.
All right, let's do a couple more. If you notice on this one, this is the left side. So that's the lower boundary, negative 1.14. And the upper boundary is positive infinity. Well, we type in positive 99 for infinity. So lower and upper on our calculator. We're going to go to menu number five, probability, number five, distribution, and number two, normal CDF. We only go to normal CDF. We never go to normal PDF. Normal CDF, the lower boundary is negative 1.14. Right there, the left side. The upper boundary is infinity and it's positive infinity. So we type in positive 99. And you can tell more than half of the graph is shaded in. So it better be more than 50%. And sure enough, the answer is 87%. The area shaded in here is 0.0.87. 0 .0 8729. About 87% of the graph is shaded in. Let's try this one, negative 1.35 and 1.62. So we don't have infinity there. We're going to go to menu, number five probability, number five distribution, and then number two CDF. The left side, the lower boundary is negative 1.35, negative 1.35. The upper boundary is, I can't even see that. I think it says 1.62, 1 1.62. So we have our left side, we have our right side. We hit enter or we hit okay, and about 85% of the graph is shaded in, 0 0.8589, rounded to four decimal places. Okay. And let's try one more. Well, actually, I want to try two more. Let's do this one. What if this whole graph was shaded in right here? The whole thing from zero to infinity, positive infinity. We're gonna type zero in as our lower boundary and 99 as our upper boundary. And if you notice, that's exactly half. So we should have 50% shaded in. Menu, five, probability, five distribution, Two normal CDF, zero is our lower boundary, and infinity or positive 99 is our upper boundary. We hit OK, and do you see how it says 0 0.5? Exactly 50% is shaded in. OK. Next, we're going to find Z values if we know the area. So this is a little different. This time, we're looking for this Z value. And they tell us the area to the left. Well, our calculator only can tell you the Z value if you input the area to the left of it. 
And to do this on a calculator, we're going to go to the menu button, five probability, five distribution, number three, inverse normal, and then type in the area to the left. What percent of the area to the left of the Z value is in there? So if I come to my calculator and go to, once again, you can either use the scratch pad A or you can go to number one calculator and that's where I always go. And we're gonna go to menu. We're gonna find the Z value this time. We're not finding the area. We know the area. We're gonna find the Z value. Menu, number five probability, number five distribution, and then number three inverse normal. The area to the left of the Z value is 0 0.0188. And if you notice, uh, here's zero. All Z values to the left of zero are negative. So our answer better be negative. When I hit OK, it says my Z value, and we do Z values to two decimal places, is negative 2.079, which is 0, 0.8. That's the Z value right there, negative 2.08. If you ended up with a positive Z value, you know all Z values to the left of zero are negative. All Z values to the right of zero are positive. So you got to know that your answer is going to be negative. Next, I want to find this Z value here. They tell us the area over on this, this area. Well, once again, if I read this down below, it says when you type in the area, you have to type in the area to the left of the Z value. So I have to type in this area. To the whole area, the, the area of the entire curve is 100% or 1. So to find the air, so even though I know the area to the right, I have to type in the area to the left of the Z value. So what I can do to find the area to the left of Z value, I type in the whole area, which is one, and then subtract the area that I do know, 0 0.8962. And when I hit enter, I know the area to the left of the Z value is 0 0.1038. Do you see these two areas, the whole thing have to add up to one and they do, they have to add up to 100%. So this is the area, area to the left of the Z value. Here's my Z value. The area to the left of the Z value is the one I'm gonna use in my calculator. So I'm going to go to menu. Five probability, five distribution, number three, no, inverse normal. Area to the left is 0 0.1038. I hit OK. And it tells me the Z value. Once again, it's to the left of zero. So I know this Z value right here is negative 1.26. Okay. And we're gonna do one more. Finding this Z value. I have to find the area to the left. Well, we know Half of this curve is 50%. Starting at zero is 50%. So on my calculator, I want to find 50% is 0.5, 0 0.5. And I'm going to subtract the area that's there minus 0 0.4176. So I know 
the area to the left of the Z value is 0 0.0825. You see, this is 50%. If I subtract the 0 0.4175, I get 0 0.0825. So to find this Z value, I have to type in the area to the left of that Z value. The area in red is 0 0.0825. So that's what I'm gonna use as the area on my calculator. Menu, five probability, five distribution, Number three, inverse normal. The area to the left of the Z value I'm trying to find is 0 0.0825. 0 0.0825. And when I hit OK, it gives me a Z value of negative 1 point. I can't even see what it gave me. to two decimal places, 1.39, negative 1.39. All right, I hope this video helped you.